I'm going to start this video with detailing a, a little encounter I had this morning. This morning at 10.30 to 12.30, I was supposed to be at a, a seminar at university, and I was rushing along up Gordon Street trying to get there because the number 30 bus, which goes to Euston, which I normally get, it was, well, more jam than Robinson's that on the, uh, would be a way of describing its motion. About 10, with about 10 minutes left to get there, I crossed over the road and was just about to cross over the road again to get to the front of the U university campus when a young American lady stopped me to talk about socialism. Now, I had about five or six minutes to spare, so I thought, okay, I'll talk to you because obviously you're passionate about the topic. And uh, to be quite honest, I'm happy to see younger people actually engaging with politics in any form and not being apathetic. She had me this rather nice note for Internationalist May Day, which they were having a meeting, oh, let's see, today at... Join us on the 1st of May at 6pm at the Medical Science and Anatomy Building at UCL, Gower Street, London, WC1, E6BT. Now, she would have liked me to go and was trying to persuade me to go because she started talking to me. And she rec and she had some similar interests to me and recognised the author I was working on for a thesis. And she was definitely interested in me going at 6 o'clock. Unfortunately, I have too many commitments and too much of a tight deadline on stuff I'm writing up. But she also, I also took this paper off her, Internationalism, Nuclear Skepta and European Imperialism. Let's see what we've got in here. Um, contents. Rooting our party in the crisis of the world order, our revolutionary battle against the ideologies of war, European news, Paris and Berlin divided by European rearmament, Europe at a crossroads, a plebiscite for war... You've got about six or seven war articles like that in a similar theme. Now, it would be all too easy to dismiss her as just a student radical or so forth. But the whole point of the young being interested in politics enough to have a concern about the poor, even if they approach it sometimes in a slightly clumsy or awkward fashion or haven't fully worked out their politics, is that they're at least engaged. And it actually gives me some hope to see them doing it rather than seeing people apathetically not engaging. Uh, certainly, I could, I'm could. i going to say that I incline far more to the left than the right, and the politics of austerity and punishing the poor that this government is engaged in revolt me. They really, truly do. They're repulsive. Leaving that aside, May Day itself is a day of what you call, could call a mutable symbol. And before I wind up this presentation in a few minutes, I'll point out a few ways in which it's a mutable symbol. Let's let that move up there and get on there. Firstly, if you're Catholic like myself, I don't go on about it too much, as I've said before, because I don't wish to be becoming Mr. Preacher Man here and attacking people with it. It's tiresome. I've always found it. I like to live my faith quietly. I will talk about it occasionally, but I have no intention of turning this into a professional Catholic channel. It's That would be hard work because of the amount of theology you'd have to look up anyway. Um, May is normally devoted to Mary and is particularly considered the month of special to her. It's considered an extended part of Easter in a way as well. The 50 days we celebrate in the liturgy, the resurrection of our Lord, a time also waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. As you can see in the picture below, if I can enlarge it, Mary is cr crowned. Of course, this represents a role for Catholics and the Eastern Orthodox as well, and some other churches as the Queen of Heaven. She is the most perfect created being. And notice I say created, we don't worship Mary before someone sticks that down in the comments. She is not a goddess. She is a created being. However, the difference between me as a created being and Mary is that Mary is a someone we look to as a model to model our behaviour on. Mary and Jesus and Joseph are also in their own person, it may be said, people who suffered a great deal and were outcasts and had severe trials in their life. So Catholics should be wary of how they approach other human beings with that in mind. 
and that's always been drummed into me. If you do not see Christ in the eyes of the person sitting outside the church, the beggar, the poorest man in society, the crippled, you will not see him in the chalice and you will not find him there. Secondly, of course, May the 1st is International Workers' Day. Now, there's a whole history behind that of the International Socialist Congresses and the Second International and why it arose to be as that day. And leaving that aside, it's also Beltane, where it's a pagan holiday. And it has traditions that go back way, way before Christianity and that are way, way older. But it, it, it is a totally movable symbol. Now, it must be said that when I came home this evening, I then found the following. More campus unrest. New York police arrest around 300 in campus raids. You had violent clashes at Uckla, which will play at the 53. Um, as you can see, that's quite quite unpleasant there. Quite violent. Fireworks being chucked, chucked around. Lead bars being employed by either side. That guy looks fun. The whole thing looks quite horrid. Let's read some of the summary. Let's get some of the summary back after having done that. Summary, police arrested about 300 protesters during Campus raids at Columbia University and Cunny in New York. Oh, gosh. I've forgotten how awful that acronym is. On Tuesday night, officials say Eric Adams, the guest city's mayor, says the massive operation took place at Columbia's request to remove those who are disrupting a peaceful protest. Elsewhere, rival protesters have clashed at pro Palestinian encampments in Los Angeles. At the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, Vice Chancellor Mary Osaka said, Horrific acts of violence occurred at the encampment tonight. She says the university immediately called law enforcement for mutual aid and support. Footage online appears to show mass counter demonstrators supporting Israel attacking their rivals with sticks. US universities have been gripped by protests over the war in Gaza. Um, I walked in the door about sort of around about half one ish or so, um, intending to just sit down and start typing stuff i've taken an hour or two out to address this on my videos because i think this is becoming a major issue and becoming quite crazy i felt like i was suddenly stepped into the tardis and was back in 1968 and i expected to hear the sounds of voodoo child's like return wang out over the radio or something uh or the doors to run off around the screen on the telly or something like that it really felt almost that kind of atmosphere. Now, before I conclude it, it should be noted that Colombia has been occupied before that most people on this side of the pond won't realise that Colombia was occupied in 1968. If you walked across the campus of Columbia University in April 1960, you may have been handed a typewriter fly and invited to your campus protest. The big steal it is on. Club was in the process of stealing land and resources from nearby Harlem, the flyer, claiming okay, students could help it. There's a whole history there that isn't so evident, and I don't think it's been really covered by the BBC all that well or brought out. Then again, it is a, a more of an American history. Notice this flyer, Stop Columbia's Jim Crow. For anyone with a basic grounding in American history, I don't need to tell you what the pun is alluding to. But let me read it out. The big steal is on. Last week, without notice, Columbia moved its bulldozers and chainsaws into Morningside Park to level the land for construction of its planned new gymnasium. This is the latest step in an eight-year plot-long path of high-level 
closed door political manoeuvring by Colombia administrators to get the city to give it over two acres of public land at the token rent of $3,000 a year. On this site, the universe hopes that athletes will play, members will drill. I presume that's National Guard members, NROTC. I'd have to look it up to be absolutely sure. But as an educated guess, I'm presuming it's national. It's something like that, a reserve officer training corps or something like that. Speculators will cram into a gym which is already obsolescent. So there's a whole history of political protest and a divide between the poor and the rich behind it. I'm going to conclude this by saying that one, unfortunately, although I can't attend this evening's meeting, I am strongly in favour of a society where we don't have the poor be having their ground, face ground into society in, down forever. In a world where people are not charged obscene prices for prescriptions, where people already suffering from illness are not tortured with endless um, tests to see if they're ill enough again, where carers are not charged obscene sums because they earned a pound or two more on their weekly wages that is allowable, and that when their father or mother or sister or brother pops it, and that they are then hit with a huge bill afterwards, which makes them so stressed, they'll probably pop it soon. Let's hope we can move towards a better world than that. And I hope people like the young lady, who, Isabel, who handed me those that pamphlet and poster might be the people to take us forward a bit. Maybe they won't, maybe they will, but at least she is trying to go somewhere. And it's yet, and the, her presence in this world is a kick up the arse for slightly older people like me who've maybe got a bit stayed. And we could do, sometimes do with it and not laughing at them or smirking at them all the time. <laughs>